What time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to find my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G E E K L Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. It's time to get this right. video started. Eight divine children of Shiva. This was a request during my live, but I think T just requested it. And I was like, oh yeah, I want to see this video for sure. I want to see the eight, eight divine children. He had eight. Let's get it started. I don't even want to, look, we don't even have to talk anymore. Ready? Go. I knew right away I wanted to see this. I, want, I knew right away. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. The whole idea of Shiva Puran is to describe the gradual socialization of Adi Dev, Lord Shiva, from a hermit to a family man. As a hermit, Lord Shiva is detached from the world, I didn't know he but was Goddess a Parvati is determined to make him participate in worldly affairs. That's right, my girl Parvati. Only then will his great wisdom and Mother power benefit the world at large. This is Lord Shiva's happy little family that we all know about. Oh yes. It consists of his wife Jaganesh. Parvati, their two sons Kartikeya and Ganesh, and Shiva himself. But taking reference from various stories of Shiva Puran and other texts, we have come across eight children of Lord Shiva. So not just those like children. the famous birth of their son Ganesh, mm -hmm. some of these children were born through powers while some were oh. adopted. Oh, Let's okay. look at each of his children and the story behind their birth. Be Kartikeya. It is said that Indra, Agni and other Devas were eagerly waiting for Lord Shiva to have a son because as per the boon given to the demon Tarakasur, only the son of Lord Shiva could kill him. Oh. But Shiva was lost in his meditation and showed no signs of physical attraction to Parvati. Oh. Thus, the god sent Kamadev, the god of love, to invoke Shiva's love. When Kamadev struck Shiva up. and interrupted his meditation, Lord Shiva burnt <gasps> Kamadev down to ashes with his third eye. That was a he bad eventually move. <laughs> fell in love with Parvati and married her. Shiva hands move. Agni his fiery seed, thinking that he will be able to handle its radiance. But Agni, unable to bear the heat of the seed, drops the seed in the river Ganga. Mother Ganga carries the seed and deposits in a lake of Saravana forest where Kartikeya was born. Oh. Kartikeya was born with six heads yes, and was six. raised by the six of the seven brightest star clusters in the night sky called Kritikas in the Hindu texts. Oh. He grows up quickly into a philosopher warrior and destroys evil in the form of demon Tarakasura. One day, Goddess Parvati was at home on Mount Kailash, preparing for a bath. As she didn't want to be disturbed, she told Nandi, her husband Shiva's bull, to guard the door and let no one pass. Okay. Nandi faithfully took his post, intending to carry out Parvati's wishes. But when Shiva came home and naturally wanted to come inside, Nandi had to let him pass, being loyal first to Shiva. Parvati was angry at the sight, but even more than this huh. at the fact that she had no one as loyal to herself as Nandi was to Shiva. Oh, so jealous. taking the turmeric paste from her body and breathing life into it, she created Ganesh, declaring him to be her own loyal son. The next time Parvati wished to bathe, she posted Ganesh on guard duty at the door. In due course, Shiva came home only to find this strange boy telling him that he couldn't enter his own house. Furious, Shiva ordered his army to destroy the boy, but they all failed. Such power did Ganesh possess, being the son of the Devi herself. This surprised Shiva. Seeing that this was no ordinary boy, the usually peaceful Shiva decided that he would have to fight him. And in his divine fury, he he's severed gonna, Ganesha's head, gonna, killing him instantly. Oh, that's how when Parvati learned of this, she was so enraged and insulted that she decided to destroy the entire creation. Lord Brahma, being the creator, naturally had his issues oh, with yeah. this and pleaded that she reconsider her drastic plan. But that looks, she said she would, life. but only if two conditions were met. Oh, One, that Ganesha would be brought back to life and two, that he would be forever worshipped 
before all the other mm. gods. Shiva, having cooled down by this time and realizing his mistake, agreed to Parvati's conditions. He sent Brahma out with the orders to bring back the head of the first creature he crosses That's how it that was elephant. laying with its head facing the north. Oh. Brahma soon returned with the head of a strong and powerful elephant which Shiva placed on Ganesha's oh. body. Breathing new life into him, he declared Ganesh to be his own son and gave him the status of being foremost amongst <coughs> the gods, Ashoka Sundari. The story of the birth of Ashok Sundari so is detailed in the Padma Puran. Okay. According to this Puran, one day Parvati expressed her desire to take a walk in the beautiful forest of Nandanvan. During the walk, Shiva and Parvati admired nature, but one tree was liked by the goddess the most. Shiva oh. said that this was Kalpavriksh, a tree that fulfilled all the desires. Okay. Since Kartikeya, the son of Parvati, had grown up and left Kailash, as a mother, it caused immense grief and loneliness I to Parvati. That. I feel that. Parvati made a wish that it would create a beautiful girl for her. Oh, the wish was fulfilled girl. immediately. Girl. The girl greeted Parvati and was named Ashoka Sundari. Oh. Parvati prophesied that Ashoka Sundari would marry Nahusha of the Luna dynasty who would be equal to Indra, the oh. king of heaven, Ayyappan. Legends speak elaborately about the birth and life of Ayyappan. There was once a female demon called Mahishi. She did severe penance and got from Lord Brahma the extraordinary boon that she can only be killed by someone who was born to Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu. So both. As two males together cannot produce an offspring, <laughs> so I say she both began of them. thinking herself to be indestructible mm -hmm. and started committing like various atrocities. They are atrocities. always trying to get clever with Somewhere the boons. Somewhere else, huh? Bhasmasur, another demon managed to obtain a deadly boon from Shiva to the they effect that any person boons. on whose head he places his hand would turn into ashes the next moment. But no sooner he got the boon, he wanted to test its efficacy on Lord Shiva himself. Realizing the implication, Shiva rushed to Lord Vishnu and sought his help. You can't do the that, god do of that. protection assumed the form of Mohini, a bewitching beauty, and mm. stood before the demon, who was in hot pursuit of the boon giver. Smitten by Mohini's charm, the demon fell for Mohini and began acting as she wanted, and ultimately, ended up placing his hand on his own head and true to the boon he burned himself to ashes the relieved shiva himself then felt deeply impressed with the damsel's charm and the spiritual union of the two gods happened for the good of the world oh, okay the divine Look child named ayappa was Look born to them bearing the name hariharan where hari stands for vishnu and haran stands for shiva okay. This child was later found by King Rajaraj Shekhar Pandyan of Pandalam and was brought up as the childless king's own son. To know the full story about the life and significance of Swami Ayappa, watch the video no, linked I don't above. About that one too. Andhaka. As per the Matsya Purana, on the Mount Mandar, Parvati covered Shiva's eyes from behind with two of her hands. Shiva could wrong. not see and everything seemed to be dark to him. Parvati's like hands sweated from the exertion and the sweat fell down on the ground. From this sweat, a dark and fierce creature was born and it began to roar. What? Since the creature was born in darkness, Shiva and Parvati named their son Andhaka. Andhaka was born blind as Shiva was effectively blind when Andhaka was born. There was another demon named Hiranyaksh who had no oh, sons. No, that's a demon. He prayed to Shiva who offered him Andhaka to raise as his own son. He Andhaka was son. later crowned king in Hiranyaksha's kingdom. However, son. there is another story associated with the birth of Andhaka. Wow, this is As per deep. the Harivamsa Puran, Andhaka was a Daitya and the son of Diti and sage Kashyap. After the defeat of the Daityas by Vishnu, Diti pleaded with Kashyap to give her a son who couldn't be defeated by the gods. Kashyap granted her boon and told her that only Shiva had the power to destroy her son and no one could match his power. Kashyap then touched her belly and a child was born with a thousand eyes and limbs. Although he wasn't blind, Andhaka walked like a blind person. 
thus bearing the name Jalandhar once oh, Indra cool. along with sage Prahaspati went to Mount Kailash to meet Lord Shiva Lord Shiva learned Remember about their are. arrival and decided to test the firmness of their faith okay he disguised as an old bearded ascetic with matted hair and a radiant face he was standing at the gate of Kailash when Indra came near him he asked about Lord Shiva but the old ascetic didn't answer anything and pretended to be lost in meditation this gesture of the old ascetic enraged indra and he hit the ascetic with his vajra the ascetic who was actually lord shiva himself neutralized indra's weapon indra's audacity made shiva angry in his anger he opened his third eye and the fierce oh, fire shot the... from it he it was, was about, about to kill, kill indra, indra. Brihaspati recognized Shiva and begged him to forgive Indra. Shiva accepted That's his request, dangerous. but the fire could not be controlled. Yeah, look. So Shiva threw the fire in the Shir Sagar, where it emerged in the form of a radiant and powerful oh, boy. The newborn began to wail loudly at the shore of the ocean, causing oh, distress to all. Lord Brahma came to pacify the boy. He saw the boy and took him to his lap. Brahma gave him the name Jalandhar. meaning the one who was inside water brahma also predicted that he will become the emperor of the demons and shall be invincible to all except lord shiva and after his death will return to shiva's third eye brahma advised the ocean to take care of the child jalandhar grew into a handsome man and was very powerful his guru shukracharya made him the king of the demons okay He was married to demon oh, Kalanemi's beautiful daughter Vrinda. Jalandhar was later killed by Shiva for his atrocities on the three worlds. To know the son. full story of Jalandhar, watch the video linked above. Wow, there's like Manasa, that's what I said. Manasa Devi is also known as the snake oh, goddess that's... and is worshipped mainly in Bengal and other northeastern okay. states of India. You know the... there are two stories associated with the birth of Manasa. According to Manasa Vijaya Manasa was born when a statue of a girl that had been sculpted by Vasuki's mother was touched by Shiva's seed. Vasuki accepted Manasa as his sister, but other Puranas declare that Sage Kashyap is her father and not Shiva. Oh. Once when serpents and reptiles had created chaos on earth, Kashyap created the goddess Manasa from his mind. The creator god Brahma made her the presiding deity of snakes and reptiles. All right. Jyoti. Jyoti is also known as goddess Jwalamukhi and worshipped in many temples in Tamil Nadu. She is also worshipped as the goddess Rayaki who is associated with the Vedic Raka in some parts of India. According to a story, she was born from the emanating light of Mahadev. According to another story, she appeared from the third eye of Parvati. Apart from these eight children, there are other characters that are often declared as the sons of Shiva and Parvati, like Sukesh, Bhuma, Kuja, etc. But the authenticity of their stories not sure. is not known. But it's a, it's amazing they got all these stories, like all eight. And that's what something like they're all of them. Like if you want to learn more about this one, so it's. family tree the family tree we're learning about but there's just so many to know like you know i mean we learn about lord shiv and then i uh, you know, say eight of his children and then they have some children they're not even sure that are, are authentic theirs i i this i can see like people studying their whole lives at this like you know uh, and still not getting everything there's just so much to know so much to learn so many so many important parts of you know different historical figures have taken part in the world and and oh, I'm telling you I'm telling you it amazes me but I'm all into it you know I am I'm like tell me more tell me more about this one and because really that's what you only you only hear about Lord Ganesh and then the other I always forget his name though. I mean Lord Ganesh is the big one you hear about about, you know, Parvati and Shiva's son. But I mean they have each of these and they've done their parts too. Important parts in in, in the world. All right, y'all, let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, all that. Until next time. Mwah!